Now, when in terms of lumbar decompression, there's all kinds of techniques. Uh, as Bob mentioned, I would, we published some of the very earliest papers uh, in cadavers and then subsequent first clinical studies on the whole concept of working through a tube and achieving the minimally invasive version of the McCullough procedure or the drill across ipsilateral bilateral decompression. And as we're working, obviously, there is the ipsilateral decompression where we're cutting towards us. And then, of course, the contralateral where we take the angle devices and we slip out the contralateral, as you can see here, foramen. And that's what these diagrams are really for. Here, you can see the ipsilateral decompression. We're coming on our side, undercutting the facets and cleaning out our frame in the lateral recess. And then once we get enough exposure and a small midline hemilaminotomy, we can go to the contralateral, slipping out the distal side, as you can see in this camera video, where I'm slipping out the distal side with my tip as well. Uh, it's not the right tip, I'm just showing the angles. And then, of course, we can go from a far lateral to medial, like when you're doing a far lateral, this like a true far lateral or endoscopic type approach. You can come in from the outside, cut down the, uh, work down the facet joint here and work underneath and do an outside in foraminotomy. And then of course, as we talked about, you can do a top line decompression to remove osteophytes that are compressing from the bottom disc space here. And then finally, there's the anterior approach where let's say you're coming from an ACDF or coming from an A-lift and you can take down osteophytes on the end plates. And you can also take back, take down posterior facing osteophytes, like for example, in a cervical discectomy or A-lift, where you can take back that marginal dorsal pointing osteophyte that's technically coming off the vertebral body. So in other words, the angles of the tools and the hand pieces can be selected and the optimal tool can be selected for each of these various approaches and angles of approaches to optimize your cutting, if you will. And you can see that here on the MR X-ray showing how we've come around the ipsilateral facet and we're taking down the superior articulating process stump of the ipsilateral or contralateral level, depending on which way you're working. So for some patients, the tools, the required decompression cannot be achieved using standard tools. And that's really what we're always saying. We're always constantly alternating between drills, if you will, and drills and of course, kerosens. So the problem with the drill is it requires a straight line of sight. So what do we do? We drill more, kerosen, curve kerosens, so on and so forth. But by the time we're done, oftentimes we've removed a lot of the functional bone, the bone that's in the facet joint, for example, or we've retracted on the nerve roots too much. So by using curved devices that can reach around corners and go again into the foramina without having to come down straight and resect the entire facet joint, that allows us to preserve the key structures. That's where the curved design of the Dereal uh, tool platform is very helpful to pick the right tool so you can spare the functional joint and ligament and muscular ligaments and bone complex, but also protect the nerves as well. But all the while, essentially decompressing along the nerve, if you are not having to constantly unroof the nerve, which leads to a lot of our structural stability long-term issues, as you know, even from a minimally invasive tubular approach, where we've always traditionally had problems with the line of sight of the ipsilateral facet complex, as you can see. And so that's really what it is right there. And that's why you can see in a big facet joint, we have to resect a lot of the facets just to even get to the external dorsal root ganglia of the nerve. But with a curved device, we can literally run it almost all the way out slowly but surely. And you can even use fluoroscopy image guides to confirm that you're out that foramen. But the bottom line is once we're, we're now running effectively along the nerve all the way out here, as you can see, and cutting only the bone we need to, to ensure that the nerve root's free, because that's why we're there in the first place, to free the nerve root, not to resect the facet joint, especially in a lot of our decompression only patients, if you will. So that's what this slide is really meant to do. This study is done. So, okay, you, you, Dr. Ku, Larry, you're saying, you can preserve the facet joint, prove it to me. Well, here we'll find that there's a 600, in a study that was done, he showed that with five uh, levels were operated by three skilled surgeons, and we would compare the CT of using standard tools, drills and round drawers, versus the curved to real drill, just like I was just showing, we on average achieved a 163% higher increase using the real drill, and the pars width, which is the risk of the pars fracture being created, the remaining laminar pars bone that is left and not 
and it's still available, is there's 24% or one quarter less reduction using the drill drill. So as much, if not more, foramen decompression across the length of the foramen while still sparing that biomechanically important bone of the pars so we don't cause an iatrogenic pars fracture here and therefore induce potentially delayed spondylolisthesis fractures or pars defects in the, in the days to come, which of course is the thing we're trying to do because we're trying to reduce that 10 to 15% incidence of delayed coronal tilt or instability or listhesis that's often seen in older people after wide lumbar laminectomy, which is the reason many of us have to fuse those patients at that time or down the line. And so here is a, 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 a video of the MIS foraminotomy. And what we see is you can see, let's see if this runs here, but fundamentally, oh, well, actually, I guess it's not running. But what, again, what, we're, what it, I think what we're trying to show is that when we're using the drill drill, you can see that the shelf of overlying bone in this 18 millimeter tube is well preserved, just like those videos we were running earlier. Whereas typically, you know, we always have to put in a bit of a shark bite to see and get the curved kerosene and get the curved curettes out that framing using a standard straight drill. So simply put, we help to solve with the curved derail devices, the line of sight issues, which can only be previously solved by cutting more facet bone back, especially in a lumbar facet foramenal decompression or a cervical foramenal decompression as well in the back of the neck. So preserving the facet complex is one of the sweet spots and really the great benefits of using a curved curvature tool piece to achieve that decompression. Again, for those of us who've done ipsilateral approaches for bilateral decompression. It's always on our side that we have to cut more and more. The other side, we have the advantage of the angled approach so we can cut underneath. But for this side, because we still come from top down, we still are always faced with a quandary of resecting more and more facet bone to ensure that our framing is well decompressed. And in fact, unfortunately, with our long-term studies, our two five-year long-term lumbar decompression studies, it's always the ipsilateral side that we often don't adequately decompress, where often the current radiculopathy can occur uh, in that area. So here's an example of the MIS T-lift decompression. It was used for undercutting the contralateral frame and clearing the frame without having, so in other words, a unilateral T-lift, obviously you take your facet, decompress it, but then you want to make sure the contralateral frame is also open without having to go and resect the other facet and approach it. So if you only use a unitubular approach, again, this facilitates the undercutting of the contralateral frame and clearing the other frame. So in other words, you can use the same curve tool to achieve the rule across as well as the ipsilateral facet sparing frame all with the same curve bit and you can see us working it there in the video. So, so what does that get you? Here's a post-op CT showing a very excellent, you see the trajectory of the drill across approach right there. And that's the very typical, see how we can come all the way, take out the inner table of the spinous process, inner table of the contralateral lamina, get out the contralateral facet complex, but still sparing a good chunk of the functional facet joint. And the ipsilateral side here, the facet joint is intact, only it's allowed us to come around and work around without having to cut more than 50% of the facet joint, which we often have to do in these older hypertrophic facets to achieve neural decompression. Again, why are we there? We're there to achieve decompression. Here you can see the sagittal cuts showing that we've gotten out the foramen, we've opened up the disc herniation and the, the large foramenal uh, chronic synovial osteophyte cysts and decompress it adequately to ensure good foramenal decompression, which again is one of the sweet spots and one, one of the main advantages of using these derail type technologies in that area. So it, again, avoiding instability. Here's another example of us removing that marginal osteophyte on this upper right panel, you can see there it seems to be a calcified synovial cyst type complex coming directly off the facet capsule. You can see how that leads to a true foraminal, uh, uh, mid to far foraminal compression. Uh, it came down, is causing an exiting uh, nerve root pain at L4-5, foot pain over the dorsum. And then by removing the 4-5 osteophyte slash calcified synovial cyst, the osteophyte's removed. And you can see it clearly gone on the post-op CT with a small hemilaminotomy and a preserved facet complex. And most importantly, the foramenal decompression easily achieved 
without having to cut out a huge portion of the L4 or 5 left facet. 